Hello and welcome back to another Farming Simulator Giants Editor tutorial and today we're going to have a look at sounds the actual sounds that are in the map itself we're going to have a look at to start with our sample mod map .xml. and in here we have the ambient sounds that are actually on the map itself um, to my understanding they need to be web files so mp3s and things like that will not work if you have a, f a sound that's in an mp3 that you like then you will probably need to get some software that will convert it to a WAV file um, before you implement it into your folder and then into your sounds so on this sample mod map for example I've got a sounds folder and you can see here there's various different WAV files so if you were going to use a specific mp3 for example then I would probably say the best thing to do would be use some sort of software that would then convert that mp3 to a WAV before you then put it into your folder and then import it into the map and I will show you how to do that in a little bit but to start with I'm just going to have a look at the actual XML here and this may not be called sample mod map .xml. on Thornton Farm I think it's called Nuston Farm .xml. you will need to have a look um, to see what your map your, your mod map has for its actual XML. Uh, if I open up Thornton Farm here, you can see that it's Nuston Farm .xml, But you know you need to have a look on the farm that you're playing around with, or the map, sorry, that you're playing around with. Or if you're creating a map for the first time, um, then if you're working from a sample mod map, then this would be what you probably would see, and then you would have this sample mod map .xml. Um, if you're actually creating one yourself from nothing at all. Um, not using a sample mod map that's already been sort of set out if you like then you would need to obviously create this XML yourself or take it from a different map and then adjust it to whatever you wish it to be now this particular sample mod map .xml is loaded via the sample mod map .lua again on Thornton Farm that would be Nuston Farm .lua but for what again for whatever map you're working with it, it could be called whatever the creator of that mod map has decided to call it but if I open this in notepad plus plus and scroll down we can see here that the actual file is loaded there by the Lua script and it then comes across and gives us the XML that it's going to load into the base directory of the game so that's how we get that into the game and like I say, these are the particular standard generic sounds that you would hear on any particular given map that is using this type of setup. Now, if you wish to change these, um, I would highly recommend that you use your own folder to do it. So this structure, this path file name here, is actually pointing towards the base directory, the actual game directory. So if I go into my C drive here, Steam library, Steam apps, common, farming simulator 15, then I've got data, maps, sounds, ambient. You can see these sounds are in that folder, the ambient sounds themselves, but this is actually in my farming simulator base game directory. So anything I change in here potentially could break my game especially if I happen to be playing in multiplayer. Now, I've not played around with sounds on a map before. This is the first time that I've actually taken a look at them because it's not really bothered me that much in the past. I've been asked by a subscriber to have a look at this and I figured, you know, why not? It could be quite interesting actually to see what it's all about. Um, but if I was going to actually change any of these sounds, what I would actually do is I would take my sample mod map like so and then go into my map folder for example and if I had a sounds folder great if I didn't have one then I might create one and in that folder I would then put whatever ambient sounds I wish to have a play around with again like it is set up for the base game you've got a sounds folder and then another folder called ambient so pot potentially you could copy that kind of setup and then create that ambient folder within this sounds folder in your mob map itself and then change the path file name in the XML here to point towards that folder and then obviously your ambient sound that you've decided to add into the map itself that way you keep the structure of your 
actual base game directory intact. You don't change anything in here, and then you save a lot of hassles later on if it does indeed, indeed break the game. Again, I can't say for sure if that's actually what would happen, but, you know, to save you having to uninstall the game and then reinstall it again because of something as silly as a little WAV file, you know, could be quite annoying. So that's at least the way I would do it. So that's your ambient sounds and how they are controlled by the game for the entire map, what you will hear at certain times of the day, whether it be day, night, whatever else, um, and all the rest of it. So have a play around with that and see how you get on with that one. Um, but what I will actually have a look at here is the sounds in the map itself for certain areas of the map that I want to create, if, if you like. Now, again, on this particular map, it does actually have some different sounds, and I have already gone in here and turned the volume down on those particular sounds because they are, or were, extremely loud. So when I first did this video, or tried to do this video, it drowned out my uh, vocals completely. And even after I adjusted the sound down considerably with my editing software, it was still extremely loud. And if anybody was to listen to that original video with headphones on, I'm sure it would blow an eardrum. So um, I'm doing this for the second time round to give it another go and get these sounds somewhat lower in volume so that uh, that doesn't happen, obviously. So in my sample mod map here, I've got a folder called All You Need, and if you're using a similar sample mod map, then chances are it'll be structured in a very similar way, if not exactly the same. And if I open this up by clicking on the plus symbol here to expand it, I can come down to a folder called Sounds. And if I click on the plus symbol there and actually open that transform group up, I've got a various different sound files in here. And if I actually go up to the play, um, and I'm just going to turn down my sound volume, so that it doesn't give me any kind of um, feedback, you will actually hear the sounds that uh, these are allocated to. So if I click plus, uh, sorry, play, those sounds will now play. And they are all in one big lump here. If I click on all of them, you can see they're all mishmashed together. So you're, and if I go further away, it quietens down, get closer, it gets louder. And you can then actually turn and it'll go from the left speaker to the right speaker or whatever else. So this is a directional sound, if you like. Now, like I said, I've already gone in and actually turned the volume down a little bit because they were extremely loud before. Um, and the way that I did that was to actually highlight that sound in the cinegraph here. And on the right hand side, I've got my attributes. And if I then go to the audio tab here, you have the range that it will be heard at. I'm not sure about the inner range. I thought that was more to do with um, tractors and things like that. But it may be a case of like, if you're inside a vehicle, then the range that you hear the sound at is decreased down to that setting, whatever that is. I don't know if that's 25 meters and that's 100 meters. I can't again say for sure, but that may be what that is referring to. So if you're just walking around outside of a vehicle, then you would hear it at 100 meters away. And if you're inside a vehicle, then you would only hear it at a range of 20 meters, uh, sorry, 25 meters away. That's a guess on my part. You'd have to experiment with that and see how you go, how that sort of works for you and adjust that to whatever you feel is appropriate for the map that you're putting together or editing. But like I said, I've actually gone in here and changed the volume here because this was actually set to one on the slider here, which is the maximum volume. So you could take that as being a hundred percent if you like. So I've reduced that down to 0 0.1 to give me the sound volume that you can hear now, which is still quite loud in my opinion, but um, again, they're all together in one big mishmash here, so they may be louder than they actually really s sort of are because there's so many sounds piled on top of each other. But once you actually place them on the map in certain areas, you may find that you would need to then adjust the volume accordingly to get what you require. So those are the sounds that are already in the map itself on in this particular case. But if you actually wanted to bring a sound in of your own, for example, and I will just use one of these bass sounds because I don't want to get a copyright strike. So I'm going to use one of the sounds that's already in the map itself and just put it somewhere else on the map. 
but I'm going to actually create my own and show you how you go about doing that. So if I just come over here somewhere out of the way, and obviously I will still have my any ambient sounds that it picks up. I don't know if that's actually shown in game, uh, sorry, in Giant Editor. Possibly not because it's not actually loading in the XML. So more than likely you won't actually hear any ambient sounds from Giant's Editor itself, just the sounds that are on the map itself. Um, but that's fine because I don't want them anyway at this particular point. And what I want to actually do here is show you how to bring in a audio source and then attach a sound file to that and then place it on the map that you wish to, you know, an area on the map that you wish to have that sound come in. So what I can do here is just anywhere on the map really in this particular case, because it's a sample mod map, there's nothing on here. I'm just literally doing this as a tutorial demonstration, whatever you want to call it. So what I'm going to do here is in my taskbar across the top here, I've got the tab called create. So I'm going to go into that and then in here I've got this audio source. And if I click on that, it will then bring up my open file box and give me my library or whatever you want to call it, my um, computer setup, whatever this is, the explorer, I guess. Um, so you can actually choose a file, uh, sorry, a WAV file that you want to allocate to that new audio source. So I'm just going to choose, let's go with pig. So I'm just going to double click that and that now has allocated that WAV file to that new audio source. And in my attributes on the right hand side here, if I go into the actual um, audio tab, I can see that the range is set to, again, I'm going to take a guess and say this is 100 meters, inner range is 30. Again, I'm taking a guess and saying that this would be if you're inside a vehicle. And then the volume is set to 1. What I'm actually going to do is change that to 0.1, the same as the others, so that it doesn't come through too loud. Now, when you actually bring this into the map, it will bury it under the map. So it will be all the way down here. So just be aware of that. When you bring it in, you may find that you import it or you create, so you create the actual audio source. And when you're looking at it in here like this in the Giants Editor session, you think, well, that's on the map. Why can't I hear anything? Well, you can't hear anything because it's actually not on the top of the map. It's buried under the map like so. So when I click play from up here, you will hear absolutely nothing at all because it's too far away. I'm outside of that again, guessing here, 100 meter range. But if I go under the map and get closer to it, we will then start to hear it come through like so. So I'm going to stop that now. What I'm going to do now, though, is actually bring it up onto the map itself. So it's on the surface of the map. And the way I'm going to do that in this particular case is just use the interactive placement. So I'm just going to go edit interactive placement and place it. Now, when I go down to it, you can see it's actually on the map, top of the map. So if I go under the map, it's not there anymore. So now it is actually on top of the map. So if you've had a play around with this before and you think you failed, you've chances are you didn't actually fail in allocating the web file or the audio source. Chances are it was the fact that the transform group was buried under the map and outside of that range for you to be able to hear it. And that confused you and you weren't sure exactly what was going on. So you then decided that it wasn't working. You failed, you didn't know how to do it and you gave up or whatever. I can't say, but um, just be aware that when you actually create your audio source, it does actually create that under the map. So you will then need to obviously locate it um, and bring it above the map surface so that you can actually hear it in game if you like. So now when I press play again, it is now above the map and I can then hear it perfectly fine. And as I get further away, it gets quieter and so on and so on. So that is basically how you create your audio source within Giant Editor. Um, and again, this is going to be really on you to collect the sound file that you wish to add to that transform group. So you would either get it perhaps maybe from the internet or get it from, you know, if you're really keen, grab a recorder and go and record a cow or something in a field. Um, and then, yeah, just allocate that. WAV file to the audio source, as I showed you there, and then bring it up onto the surface of the map. And there you go. You've got your audio source into the map and then potentially into the game. Obviously, you'd need to then put this map into a game 
and double check that it does work. I'm not going to really do that because this is just to show you how that uh, how to get the audio source in, and I'm pretty confident that it would generally work. Um, I ha like I said, I haven't really played around with this too much, um, but uh, if it works here and it's showing it on the top of the map, there's no reason why it wouldn't uh, work in game. And the other ones certainly do work in game. The ones that are already on the map. And they're no different. They were created in no different way to what I've done here today. So, yeah, that's how we play around with that. So you've got your, um, as I showed you before, your sample mod map .xml, whatever that may be called, for your ambient sounds that are in the game. And then how to basically change those by creating your own path file name in a different folder and then adding in the appropriate sound file in the XML itself and then how to add in a sound of your own and creating the audio source within Giant Senator and then placing it on the map in a particular area that you want to have that sound activate. So that's it, that's how to play around with sounds and again how to adjust the volume, play around with your ranges. I don't know if this is a hundred meters, I can't say and I have not I'm not entirely sure if that is inside a vehicle or outside a vehicle the inner range one i'm not entirely sure about i would probably say logic for me would be that inner range would be inside a vehicle it's quieter so it gets quieter at a lesser you, know, you don't you know again taking this as meters so outside you'd be able to hear it from further away because you've got nothing blocking you no windows no doors no nothing like that but inside a vehicle you'd have obviously glass and whatever else so this would represent that by having it in a range so inside a vehicle it would get quieter much quicker over a lesser distance than it would be if you were just walking around outside that's my take on it anyway but you would need to obviously experiment with that yourself and adjust these attributes in the audio section here to suit whatever works for you and again with the volume you need to play around with that um, I've reduced these massively like I said because they were really really loud um, they would be affected by your in-game options sound volume so this is in Giants Editor there are no options as such like when you load the game and you change your volume settings in your options window that's not the case in Giant Editor when you load in a sound file in Giant Editor if this is set to 100 it's going to play it at the highest volume it's going to play it at the light you know it's going to be very loud so I've had to again like I say reduce this down so you would need to play around with that volume setting to get it to work for you in game because if you're using your own audio source you may find that the audio source that you're importing is either extremely loud or extremely quiet it just depends how it was recorded or where it, where it was taken from so you will need to play around with this volume setting to get it to a volume that is acceptable for you in game okay okay thank you very much for watching i think there's um nothing really more i can show you there with the audio sources and uh, i'll catch you on the next one